the time for talk was over. World champion South Africa versus Six Nations champions Ireland at Loftus Versville in Pretoria. This was a test match of epic proportions and I've got green on, so let's get into it. Hello amateurs, welcome back to the channel, here with you throughout the summer series and beyond, so hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss any episodes. Now, the war of words has been going ongoing for many, many months. And if I'm honest, this game really could not come soon enough. South Africa, double World Cup champs. But in the matches between these sides in recent times, Ireland have had the edge. And this game didn't have the gravity of a World Cup clash, but it really had pretty much everything else. So let's get started. And South Africa just noticed that Ireland were very tight in defence early on. They didn't do a huge amount apart from stand and whip the ball across the pitch side to side. And that was good enough to get Kurtley Arensa in down the left hand side with a wild step back inside to score and 7-0 after three minutes. It felt like a huge blow, but it didn't actually translate into the rest of the game. That was just a real like sucker punch that Ireland were not ready for and South Africa really absolutely ruthless at the start of this game. Kickoffs in today's games have been messed up by almost every team, and Quagga Smith joined the party uh, by dropping that re uh, resultant kickoff straight into touch. Drop number one for Quagga. Um, and Ireland were just moving the point of contact all the time. I'm not sure if the person that caught the ball carried the ball in for the entire like first 20 minutes. They were tipping inside, tipping outside, just moving it all the time. So South Africa couldn't line them up for big shots. Peter Amani in particular was first receiver and passed the ball almost every time until about the 35th minute when he got walloped by Andre Pallard the first time he tried to catch to um, to carry the ball in. One of those tips, when Ireland declined a penalty shot for a tap five routine, uh, hit Joe McCarthy in the head, which uh, ended that tap five routine very quickly. But the resultant scrum, and this was a problem or a suspected problem from Ireland, went very well for them. They really Andrew Porter got a good nudge um, on, on his side, caused a little bit of a problem, but Colby cleared it up with an absolutely incredible kick, like 60 metres straight down the touchline, which Osborne picked at fullback, uh, which was a bit out of the blue, dropped it into touch. A uh, bit of a shocker, but Quagga Smith dropped another kick shortly after, dropped number two for Quagga, which led to a penalty, an Ireland field position, and then another penalty, which they did kick this time for 7-3. Robbie Henshaw has been playing incredible rugby over the last 12 months. And he spotted Khaleesi and jumped out of the line to try and smash him. Only the opposite happens. Khaleesi saw him coming as well. Got that ball up and fended using those few extra pounds that he's picked up in Paris. And absolutely belted through Robbie Henshaw. This was a massive collision. Henshaw looked dazed and he played on. But he would not come out for the second half. South Africa got a penalty from that result in play, not rolling away and 10 3. And it just looked like it just looked like South Africa had the edge in most of the facets of play here. Just that bit more physical, just that bit more dominating. It looked like Ireland were just trying to run, duck and punch and hide and get away from them a little bit, but they couldn't. Um from the kickoff then. Quagga Smith caught it and got a massive cheer from the uh, from the Loftus First Felt crowd, which put a smile to my face. Well done, Quagga. Um, and Ireland were, at this point, trying a few crossfield bombs as well. So they're moving the point of contact a lot, trying a few crossfield bombs, trying to get Nash up in the air. Uh, following one of those, Dan Damien Dialendi got the ball and he saw Peter Omani twice in the space of about two seconds before the ball was spread wide the other way for the magnificent sight of Peter Steftatoit rampaging down the other wing. This bit of play led to didn't lead to anything, but it was just like, oh, just magical. Another penalty shortly afterwards, Andrew Porter off his feet making a tackle, and it's now 13-3, and again, it just felt like the game was getting away from Ireland. They were struggling to keep in touch, and all the important moments were going South Africa's way. Um, and that happened again in very shortly afterwards when Bongi Umbanambi uh, gave away an easy penalty and it was missed by Crowley. This was very kickable and you just felt at that point in the game they needed to get those points on the board when the opportunity was there, get back within seven points and, and give themselves a chance. But 
they did get back in the game very soon afterwards when she um, offloaded to low. It's one of those kind of wrap ones near the touchline, which almost never works. And it kind of didn't work this time as low almost got tackled into touch, but did amazingly well to keep the ball in play back inside for Osborne to dive over in the corner. 13-8 and that was half time. Some threads from this first half, some trends that were happening. South Africa carrying. They did not accept any tackles whatsoever. They would just bang in there, stay on their feet, keep driving. Somebody will come on, latch on and pick them up and take them along. They just battled for every single yard. They managed to get the ball to width a lot of times in this first half as well. Shocking this Irish defence and big crazy shock. They were really physical in defence. Ireland tipping a lot. As I said, Peter Omani really uh, being the key one of those. Caelan Doris is having a cracking game, just carrying well, physical at the breakdown, making tackles. He really is an absolutely world-class back row forward. The Irish scrum was also very decent in that first half, but they were just making too many errors. Was it the pressure of the South Africans? Was it the pressure of the occasion? Hard to say, but they were just keeping South Africa... Uh, oh, sorry, South Africa was staying at arm's length, you know, some part as a result of Irish errors. Dan Sheehan took a knock on his knee, got it bandaged up just before the half, and he didn't return after half time, along with Robbie Henshaw, who I men- mentioned earlier. But when you've got replacements like Kelleher and Ringrose, you're going to be okay, right? It just ch- lacks your- changes your options maybe a little bit down the road in terms of what you might be able to do later in the game. But those are two fine players to come on and um, South Africa though took the ball by the horns at the start of the second half and their attack was just so unrelenting smash 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 these huge South Africans just keep going at the Irish defence but Ireland defended incredibly well huge heart and um, and they just repelled them Pollard missed a penalty that was very similar to the one that uh, Crowley missed in the first half you know these people they, they're like they're You feel like Pollard never misses, but he did miss this one. 50th minute, bomb squad time. You heard Luke Pearce call the numbers out to the South African team. One, two, three, four, five and six uh, all subbed on. And they came on overly aroused and gave a scrum penalty away immediately. Um, But during this part of the game, there there was not many chances. There were not many chances to score. Um, But the physicality was huge, the intensity was huge. And there were a couple of times when players kind of got the ball and were just a little bit scragged, which limited their momentum, and then got smashed by somebody else. Um, And quite often as well, hitting the ball itself, which is in the the front of the player. And that just makes people bounce all over the place. There was three of those in about a minute. And and the game, the crowd were loving it. It was up and it was uh, a brilliant spectacle. And... As I mentioned earlier, there were still plenty of errors too, but it didn't really detract from what was a great game because the intensity was so high, because it meant so much. It kind of all part of in though in this situation, I think. Kalen Doris was continuing to carry really well, but Malcolm Marks, who was on, won a turnover, and then he wins a lot of turnovers, but what he doesn't often do, in fact, I've never seen him do this, uh, and that was smile afterwards. Um, I've only ever seen him completely blank faced like an absolute terminator but somebody said something to him and he smiled which was uh which was nice a bit of levity in a very intense game Ireland were absolutely desperate indeed uh, at this point flying around you know clinging on to South Africans and but they got a bit of pressure and then they got a bit more pressure and South Africa threw a few dodgy passes and suddenly Ireland have got a counter ruck when the ball pops out the back James Lowe's away down the left-hand side. He outsprints Marks, gets around Pollard and scores in the corner. The crowd goes wild. Well, the Irish crowd goes wild. Although the South Africans do like to scream when the opposition score. Um, and then TMO. TMO comes in and uh, sadly Kelleher, um, who whilst doing this, did prove that hookers can still hook. Unfortunately, was just on the floor when he hooked the ball back in the ruck. And I say unfortunately because that would have made it 18 all. Uh, 18 all or 13 all? 13 all? 13 all. Um, and, I, and I'm gutted because I'm gutted for the game. I think the game being tied up at that point 
with about 20 minutes to go would have been amazing and would have had this incredible finale. And I was just like, oh man, that would have been so cool to see that one being given. But it wasn't. Craig Casey shortly afterwards. Craig Casey, by the way, oh, I thought I had a really good game. Everyone was talking about Jameson Gibson Park being a massive loss for Ireland, and he is. But I thought Craig Casey was quality throughout, really nipping around. And he kicked a 50-22 from the box, which um, sadly, unfortunately, led a couple of phases later to him leaving the field. RG Snyman, uh, he was the one that made the tackle. No fault on his part. He thought Casey still had the ball while he was driving through. Casey's head bounced off the hard high belt and it looked like a nasty knockout. Um, he did have his heart, arm raised as he was going off waving to make sure that people knew he was OK. But that was a nasty moment and the game was stopped for several moments. Well, no, five or six minutes, I think. So uh, thoughts with uh, Craig Casey there. Hope he's OK. It seems like he is. Probably won't be playing next week, though. Also during this period, Caelan Doris, uh, captain in, was really pushing his luck with Luke Pearce. Luke Pearce, who previously, uh, a couple of years ago, lost his patience with Billy Vonapola and gave him back 10, back 10, twice in quick succession. Luke Pearce has talked about that openly and said that's not the type of referee that he wants to be. He didn't control his own emotions in those moments. He did during this game because he spoke really calmly to Caelan Doris but also made it really clear that he was not accepting of what Doris was doing which was basically asking the same question over and over and over expecting a different answer really well refereed by Luke Pierce. you don't want to start giving penalties for dissent if you can absolutely avoid it and he managed to avoid it so well done uh, but it did have a it was a South African penalty which Pollard kicked towards touch and I say towards touch because it looked like James Lowe might just keep it in. James Lowe reached over the touchline, flicked it back inside, and Cheslin Colby reacted quicker than anybody else, which was not hard, because every Irish player within spitting distance of that event was stood still. Colby whizzed through, kicked it through, and scored. And it was just like, right, well, that's game over. But TMO came in again, and for the life of you, you could not see whether it was foot in touch, uh, sorry, whether Lowe was still in touch when he released the ball or not, that wasn't the perfect camera angle. I think, in all likelihood, he was still in contact with that ball when his foot hit the ground and therefore was in touch and the try uh, should not have been given, but the TV footage did not show that. So they could not override the try, correctly given, and 20 points to eight at that point. And that did feel like game over. It had been so tight in the second half, Chances were so slim on the ground. It felt like it was it was going to be really hard for Ireland to get back into it at that point. And Ireland did have chances, though. They had entries. They had lineouts deep in South African territory, but they messed up one lineout. They lost another. They had Bundy Aki being a complete hero, holding his arm, like literally cradling it in between phases, but still carrying the ball up. Incredible um, from him. Uh, Ireland out of subs, so he couldn't go off. And Ireland were just pushing and driving and kept going. And they got a lot of penalties, a ton of penalties. And um, Kurt Lierenza ended up with a yellow card from that. Doris was, I mean, literally a millimetre from scoring. It looked like the ball might have, you know, it was so, so close. Just grazing towards the top of the turf, but not given. And I think correctly so. Again, it was ruled as held up. So there had to be compelling evidence for it to have been given, and there definitely wasn't that. But a minute later, and I think this was the best bit of play in the entire game, and one of the best bits of play I've seen in international rugby for a while, um, because it was the tight head prop, the reserve tight head, whose name's just jumped out of my head, excuse me for that, but he carried the ball at the front of an arrow. So he's got a player on his left and a player on his right, and he had uh, Kean Healy on his left-hand side, and he looked to pass back inside to Kean Healy, but Healy ran away from him, and from behind Healy, Healy came Kelleher to, on a short ball and he went clean through. It's one of the great, you know, a fantastic bit of shape and the timing on it was absolutely perfect. Kelleher flying through, passed back inside to Murray who uh, galloped, uh, wandered, wandered over for a try and, and that made it 2015. And this was absolutely game on with five minutes to go. This is what we wanted. Everything's on the line now. Let's have it. South Africa kickoff, so long. It would have probably bounced in goal, but James Lowe tries to catch it 
knocks the ball back into his own in goal. An absolute disaster, and it's a five-metre scrum to South Africa. And a five-metre scrum for the ages as they absolutely rampaged through the island pack. I mean, it's hard to think of a more dominant scrum. They snapped and went and just piled through. Ireland disintegrated. Kelleher got given a yellow card as the penalty try was given in 27-15. But, I mean, and this sometimes happens when it feels like the game's completely over. One team just let loose and play whatever they want and the other team's defence just sort of eases off a little bit. Maybe that's what happened here as Ireland went through multiple, multiple phases, ending with Ryan Baird sprinting over in the corner. Absolute drama, 27-20. Still about 50 seconds on the clock, so Ireland do have another chance of this. But the kick was right in the corner. Um, Crowley... Uh, rushed his kick off. I think it was Crowley. The ball fell off the tee. He tried to drop kick it and uh, missed, but only narrowly. Um, but it still meant that Ireland now had a chance to tie the game if they could get a try from the last play. It didn't quite happen. They tried to run it from their own sticks. I think it was Ringrose who eventually knocked it on. Huge. It would have been a huge effort to score from there and they couldn't manage it. But this was a brilliant game. All the intensity. like And as I said, the errors don't matter, I don't think, in a game like this. It, because... The gravity of it, because it means so much to both of the teams, because of the intensity. And it was a game of really fine margins. Only one score in it in the end. And several scores that were given or not given were millimetres. I mean, literally millimetres from being given the other way. This was a fine test match. I loved it. And um, I can't wait. I can't wait until next week. Let's put it that way. A couple of people to to uh, highlight here. I thought Sia Khaleesi carried the ball in the first half as well as he's done in any international match I've seen. Really heavy carries. Um, Something he's not particularly known for. He does it every now and again, but it's not really uh, what he's known for. I think Caelan Doris was also one of the best players on the pitch. Maybe even the best player. But he has to captain better. He's not going to come up against referees as forgiving as Luke Pearce was today every week. So Caelan Doris, brilliant play. But you've got to uh, tidy up that chatter uh, around the referee. You're not going to get any favours if you talk to a referee like that. Anyway, that's what I think. Wearing the green, like I said, didn't matter which team won for me today. Uh, It's just a brilliant spectacle. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a friendly conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps other people find it. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And do not forget to get out and play.